Moving on to Cameroon, first of all, the internet is back in southern Cameroon, yes so! But not before the blackout cost Cameroon's economy 3.2 million dollars. So let me tell you what has been happening in southern Cameroon. First of all, can you believe that the government is forcing secondary school students in the English part of the country, that is southern Cameroon, to write the GCE exam? That's the exam you write before you get to the university. Despite the fact that these students have missed almost an entire academic year due to protests. Not only that, soldiers and policemen are parading their schools during exams. Where is that done? I've never heard of anything like that. Now, out of 180,000 students students expected to write this year's GCE exam, only 40,000 registered and more than 70% of them are from the francophone region of the country. Now the minister of secondary school said that well they must have been studying at home so they must write this exam by fire by force. So he instructed the GCE registrar to create special centers for those that did not register for the exam. Listen to what uh, a Cameroonian friend who is a lawyer, this is what he said. This is a calculated attempt by the French government to reduce the value of the most prestigious English exams in the country and replace it with French exams called BACC. Wow, my people in Cameroon, I like to hear from you about this. And still on Cameroon, a lawyer is now facing death penalty for organizing a protest, a protest on Congo Felix Ago Bella has been detained since January. They charged this man with treason, with terrorism, with everything, eight counts. And um, can you believe that the government is saying that he will be tried in a military tribunal? This guy was arrested from the English speaking part of the country. They took him to the French speaking part of the country. And now they are saying that he will be tried by the military tribunal. By the way, he's not just a lawyer. He's the leader of the now banned Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society Consortium. And then he's also the leader of the FACO Lawyer Association. And and also the leader of the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa. In fact, this man has worked with the UN as a human rights officer. Now he's facing death penalty for organizing a protest. This is what Pobia is doing. His tactic is that if he can deal with the leader, take out the leader, that others will keep quiet because he's trying everything to make sure that people are not protesting in Cameroon. Also, three guys were arrested in 2015 for passing a joke text. The text message that they received, they passed it among themselves, three of them the text message said that Boko Haram recruits young people from 14 years old and above. Conditions for recruitment is four subjects at GCE, including religion. You guys know that Boko Haram has been killing people in Cameroon. A lot of people have died in Cameroon because of Boko Haram insurgency. Now, the joke is that Boko Haram is able to recruit people easily while it's very difficult to find a job in Cameroon. Now, a teacher saw the text message and called the police. The next thing, these three guys were sentenced to 10 years in prison and they've been jailed since January of 2015. As it is, they've spent more than two years in prison. In fact, they were kept in chain for months. Amnesty International has gathered more than 310,000 letters and petitions, signatures from around the world and they decided to hold a press conference in Yaoundé last week in order to address this issue. Can you guys believe that the government sent soldiers to go and shut down this press conference? I mean, it was just a press conference. 12 soldiers came to close down the conference room in a hotel tell at the capital in Yaoundé and then the communication minister came out and said well the event is a threat to public order can you imagine so the three guys are still in prison meanwhile a lot of Africans are celebrating the fact that France has elected a new president Emmanuel Macron and this new president a lot of Africans are hoping that he would not continue the master slave relationship that a lot of francophone countries have with France also a lot of people are hoping that maybe now the people can remove dictators in francophone countries without France backing up the dictators. Here is the video of the new president dancing with an African community in France. Yeah, that's very nice, right? That was awesome. I'm so happy that the African community were able to meet the new president and dance with him. But can I just say, besides dancing with the president, the Francophone communities in France, you guys have a lot of work to do. After dancing with him, I was hoping you guys would sit down with him and talk to him about what has been happening. And maybe this happened and I just didn't see the video. But that was an opportunity for you to talk to him about what is going on in Cameroon. For you to talk to him about 
the case of this lawyer, the three young men that were arrested. There are so many things to talk to the president of France. If one million Africans in France will storm the office of this president, the money that he should put an end to the terms of all these puppets that they have in Africa, don't you think he would do something? I'm so happy that you were able to dance with him, but seriously, you need to do more than dance with this man. In the meantime, I'm hoping that help will come for these three young men, as well as the lawyer that is now in prison and so many others that have been arrested because they've been protesting in Cameroon. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.